Uh, we have Mehawk yeah, yes. here to talk about troubleshooting slow running beam pipelines. So give her a round of applause. So hi everyone. I'm talking today about how to troubleshoot slow running beam pipelines. I'm Mehek and I am a technical solution specialist at Google Cloud. I deal mostly with cloud data flow and PubSub products. So let's go over some of the goals of my today's talk. Throughout this session, I, I will be sharing some Apache Beam pipeline troubleshooting techniques that would empower you to research and resolve Beam issues by yourself. I also want to equip you with some of the self-service analytics skills that would reduce the mean time to recover from the job failures. I will be sharing some tricks and samples navigating through the logs for slow running or stuck beam pipelines using Dataflow as an example. So to begin with, how to identify if the beam pipeline is slow or stuck. If the pipeline runs slowly or is running from a long time without reporting results or has increased data freshness or system latency, or is not consuming input, then it indicates that the pipeline is either slow or stuck. So let's go over this troubleshooting workflow. Dataflow provides real-time feedback about your job. There, and there are some basic set of steps that you can follow to identify the root cause and see why your job is being stalled. First place to look when the job encounters any issues is the job logs or the step logs and try to determine the cause of the issue. A failed Apache Beam pipeline can be attributed to either a graph or pipeline construction error, which occurs when the data flow runs into troubleshoot into a problem due to lack of uh, building the job graph, or they can be uh, issues with job validation. So the data flow service validates any pipeline jobs that you launch. This can prevent your job from being successfully created or executed. And generally the job validation fails if you have some permission issues in your project. Or there can be some other exceptions in the worker code that can cause the job to be either stuck or slow. That can arise from some user code exceptions or um, if the data flow doesn't distribute to the parallel workers, the Pardu instances of a Pardu beam transformation. And if, uh, if you're able to not determine the cause through the job logs, then maybe it's a good way, good step to check the quotas and the sync for streaming jobs, such as uh, PubSub. And in case of batch pipelines, you can use the execution details to check for slower stuck stages. And I'll be covering um, some of the steps on how to troubleshoot batch and streaming pipelines in the further slides. Uh, and for this batch and streaming both, you can also use uh, cloud monitoring data flow metrics view to see how our, how's the job performing. So in the Google Cloud co console, in the data flow section, you will see all the job jobs status. Like here you see that uh, the, this first job is running and the second one is succeeded. So you can see all the jobs here with the status running, succeeded or failed. Along with this, you can also see if what's the start time of the job, what's the end time, what kind of job it is, either it is a batch or streaming job, which SDK version it is using and which region it is running in. So if you click on a particular job, you can see the run results of the job and can dive more into the job logs. So let's go over uh, the Log Explorer view and see how can we troubleshoot the job. So when you click on a job for the detailed view, you see right below the job um, view section, there is this job logs. And since it is a restricted view, there is a arrow here on the right. And even when you click on a particular message in the job logs, it will show you open in Logs Explorer. So when you click on either of them, you will see this view where the query you see on the top would be automatically built and all the job logs would be visible here. So you can select the last 30 days. Like if I go back to the previous slide, you see on the top there is last 30 days. If you click there, you can select which time frame do you want to view the logs for. 
So on clicking there, it would give you an expanded view and you can select the time frame here. So next is what type of logs do you want to view? So here we see that currently we are looking in the job message logs. So job message logs contain job level messages that various components of data flow generate. Examples include auto scaling configuration when workers start up or shut down, progress on the job step and job errors, worker level errors that originate from crashing user code and are present in worker logs also propagate up to the job message logs. There are some other type of logs as well that we can use to troubleshoot our job. So when you click here at the log name, you will see uh, some other type of logs. And generally for our data flow jobs, we look into worker startup logs, worker logs, Docker and Kubelet logs, and the shuffler logs. So what are these logs and how do we determine at which um, instance is the issue? So if we, so worker startup logs contains startup logs from the worker. They capture messages related to the startup process. The startup process includes downloading the jars from the cloud storage, then starting the workers. If there is a problem starting the workers, then these logs are a good place to look into. So now the worker logs. If we see worker startup logs and there are no worker logs, then it clearly indicates then that there is, there, there is some issue starting up the workers. So it's a good place to see why the workers were not able to start up. So workers do most of the pipeline work, for example, applying all your part do transforms. Worker log contain uh, logs uh, that, are log that are contained in your code. So if you're using any external third party library, all those logs would show, would show up in the worker logs. And the Docker and the Kubelet logs contain messages related to these public technologies, which are used on Dataflow workers. For example, if you have any issues pulling the custom container images, then um, from the Docker, those logs will show up here in Docker and Kubelet logs. And the shuffler logs contain messages from workers that consolidate the results of a parallel pipeline operations. So you can just check these logs over here and those logs will appear for, for the log explorers view. So next is we can also apply the severity of the logs which we want to view. For example, here we have debug, info and error. In some cases I have observed that even the info logs would have some uh, like error logs or some exceptions are traced under info logs. It happens mostly for uh, user code errors where the logging, the logging is going at info level. So maybe it's a good, good space to check both error and info if you are not able to find anything in the error. So now let's dive into the job metrics tab to check the performance of um, the job where the watermark has increased. So now right below this uh, job metrics tab, you'll see different metrics. I'll go over the throughput first. So what throughput means? Throughput means the, the volume of data that is being processed by the pipeline. So right now in the graph we see, uh, okay, so throughput is measured in elements per second. And in the pipeline we see that uh, towards this side, the throughput is dropping to zero, which means that pipeline is not processing any data. And it is a good indication that the pipeline is either stuck due to some errors or like is behaving slowly because it's ramping up and then coming down. So throughput is almost zero. It's not, the pipeline is not processing data. So in this case, you would want to go into the logs and check why, why is this happening? So the next, next is CPU utilization. So CPU utilization is the amount of CPU used divided by like whatever CPU is available for use. So we see here in the graph for some of the workers, the CPU is at 100% utilization. It's a good case. It can happen due to hotkey. And hotkeys basically limit the ability of data flow workers to work in parallel as we just learned in our previous session. So here is another graph where all the workers, sorry, where all the workers are at 100% CPU utilization, which indicates that this job is totally CPU bound. So it is a good indication where we see that 
the job is not able to proceed. So basically, we don't have any CPU for the job. So the other one is data freshness, which can indicate that the data flow job is stuck. As we see that, so what is data freshness? It indicates like how up to date the data is in our pipeline. So here in the graph, we see that on May 13th, the data freshness is just increasing, which indicates that there are some issues uh, with the pipeline ingesting the data in the downstream services. So the other one is system latency, which indicates how long an element waits inside any source in the pipeline. As the graph is spiky, it shows that the pipeline code is causing some issues uh, keeping up with the backlog data. So basically we have different stages in our pipeline. If the, if the code is stuck at, a, at one particular stage, then we see then that there is a system latency the system is slowing our progress down for the pipeline. So next is how do we identify the stragglers in a bad job? So how do we check? When a bad job takes a long time to process data, it would be best to check on the straggler workers. So right under the execution details section, there is a stage progress view under the graph view. And once you click over there, you will see that there is a one straggler detected. This will show up in the data flow job. So how does it affect your job? It takes significantly longer to complete other work items in the same stage, and it reduces the parallelism for the pipeline as it blocks new worker from doing any progress. So data flow can, is able to detect these stragglers only for the bad jobs and not for the streaming jobs. So once the stragglers are detected, the recommendation is that we uh, re-key our data, that apply a pardo transform to output a new key value pair, and maybe reshuffle your data to avoid a single worker having extra load. So uh, I'll be going over all the logs for a job which shows there is a long active user operation and the job is basically stuck. So if you observe an error like this in your logs where operation ongoing in a step or the processing is stuck in step, then it indicates that um, the pipeline is basically stuck. As it says, the processing stuck or operation ongoing over and over again from, for a streaming pipeline. So here is a QR code where uh, it includes the public documentation which we have for troubleshooting these kind of errors, this particular error. And um, so, so now I, I'll start with the Logs Explorer view, which I just showed you in the previous slides. So here you see the query. So in the query, we see that uh, I'm pulling out the worker logs and I added the resource type as data flow step and the job ID, whichever job ID I want to look the logs for. So in the results, I, I saw that, okay, so I found operation ongoing in step right to BQ batch loads. Uh, this this operation ongoing step I found. So this is usually enough to identify that there is a stuckness in the pipeline and we can kind of um, focus on the root cause. Now we know that the job is stuck due to operation ongoing in step issue. So now from the, from the job log, we'll try to go through the stack trace to find where is the issue coming from. So here we see that it is happening due to some issue in BigQuery helper pending job manager class. And it says wait for done. Since the code is open source, I can just open up this class and look for the implementation for wait for done. And when I did that, I, I was able to see that this class is waiting for some BigQuery job to complete. I kind of had an idea also by looking at the name BigQuery helper pending job manager wait for done. So here is the beam code for this class. So once I'm able to identify this, then um, the next step is to look more in the logs to find out what's happening above this particular message. So on looking further in the job logs, I found that there is a job ID beam BQ job load, which is not found. And then there is another one, another job ID which failed 
and there is another one which is pending so it's basically the job is basically retrying the job id which and which indicates that there there is some issue with the bq job so this is how we troubleshoot a slow pipeline uh, using the logs explorer so now in the stack trace we saw that this this was a beam class but like after going through the implementation and looking through the logs we found that this particular job id was giving an error but there can be instances where you see some apache beam class or there there is some internal uh, functioning that that is not working properly so in that case what you can do is you can open a case or just create a new issue with apache beam or if you think that there is any feature that needs to be implemented you can just raise a new feature request from by selecting new issue and the, most of the time like we'll have to create a new issue or this these kind of issues happen when uh, you upgrade to the newer sdk version and uh, there is a qr code which which can help you create a new issue as well so scenario 2 is um, i'll be showing some logs related to gc thrashing or out of memory issues in a pipeline so if the and there is a qr code which helps us uh, this is a public documentation for gcp where the, there will be some steps uh, guiding us through how to uh, fix the out of memory issues so if you see in the diagnostic section that there is a message like shutting down jvm after eight consecutive periods this indicates that um, the data flow job has suffered out of memory issue and we need to further investigate that uh, where is the memory leak happening or if there are any steps we can follow to do that to help resolve this so now if i look at the memory utilization graph this indicates that the memory went up until the max and then there was there were some internal workers that got restarted they did some work again and then the memory reached uh, to the max limit again so this is a clear example of how uh, uh, the gar the garbage collection is happening and we are restarting the workers over and over again so what do we do in this case we use the general recommendations would be to use machine types with higher memory Uh, like if you are using n1 standard 4 then maybe the best practice is to use um, n1 high mem 4 and decrease the parallelism of processing by reducing the number of worker harness threads so for streaming pipeline the default is 300 and for the batch pipelines uh, it is the number of processors on the worker please note that uh, by decreasing the uh parallelism so decreasing the parallelism would affect the pipeline performance so we generally suggest you to increase to upgrade the machine type rather than de decreasing the parallelism for your data flow job and um, another option is do vertical auto scaling which is which can be done by enabling data flow prime so what what do you mean by vertical auto scaling is basically we are um, Ramp, we are increasing the size of the workers rather than spinning up new workers okay yeah so if we are looking for um, if you are looking to do performance optimization for a data flow job then we have this cloud profiler and cloud profiler it is available for data flow pipelines written in apache beam sdk for java and python this can be enabled at startup time using this uh, flag data flow service options enable google cloud profiler and this is the flume graph where you see that in the horizontal direction you can see stack traces and code running in parallel in the vertical direction you can see the stack traces and code running in parallel and the in the horizontal direction you can see how much time it takes to execute So after clicking on interesting frame the flame graph focuses on the stack trace giving a good sense of long running user operation so you can use this graph to kind of optimize and look for which particular operation is taking really long time yeah i think yeah that's it any questions